Hey everybody, it's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Good afternoon. That's right, it's a little after noon. <laughs> it's a nice day out, but you know, I'm always cold, so even though it's nice out, still got to wear a jacket until I get the juices flowing, you know what I mean? So uh, I whipped uh, the John Deere L100 out today. This will be probably episode six if you're including the episode that I went and picked it up. You gotta, because the video is about me picking it up. So that's episode one, even though I didn't fix anything on it. This is episode six. Um, so far, it's going pretty well. You know, never thought I would get the engine running. Uh, did quite a bit to the engine to get it going, but it only took about three episodes. Uh, two episodes was freeing this up and then painting it yesterday. Uh, today, when I woke up, we look at the deck, and it's got, like, a lot of these rust spots on it. Because the rust is not completely depleted from the deck itself, right? It mixes with the paint. And therefore, it kind of requires two coats, unfortunately, you know? Same goes for the green. While the paint looks okay, you see these rust dots, spots on there, you know, because it mixed with the paint. Uh, I think another coat would probably cover that up pretty well. Um, it should, I should do the whole coat, you know, but you know what? Um, I guess I have to do that now because you can't mount this yet, you know? I want to show you what I'm looking at here, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit and you'll see the deep areas where there was a lot of rust. You've got the build up here. I mean, you can't if you can't feel it or anything. It's just there, you know. It's just mixed in with the paint. So, I think another coat would probably fix that. Same goes for the body as well. So I'm not too worried about that part here because I'm putting the rubber foot pad on there, right? But it does show on the sides there too, so I might just go ahead and uh, rebrush it again, at least just to cover the spots. In addition, later on when I do that, I'm going to try to um, wipe down the hood a little because it has these speckles of like paint, almost like overspray all over the hood and the dash too. I don't know what it's from, but... I'm going to wipe that down. In addition, the uh, headlight lens needs to be removed and cleaned. Even though the headlights do work very well, it's dirty. So I wanted to show you also that the um, steering is getting better. It's a lot easier to turn now because I greased it, you know. So I'm just going to have to just go back and forth with it, you know? But it is turning better. It's still stiff, but it's better around the middle area. And the middle is where, you know, most of your turning is at.
cleaned it up a bit, wiped down the engine compartment, touch up paint seemed to work better with a uh, with the second coat. And uh, because it's such a nice day today and the sun is blazing, uh, it dried very quickly. As you saw, I installed the um, mower deck and the uh, cable that uh, engages the PTO. It was uh, pretty fast. I think I might have stretched that cable a little bit, but we'll see how it goes. Um, this is for Mark Nice, my friend who told me that I should attach the uh, fuel pump to the side over there. It actually has its own bracket, you know. Looks pretty good, huh? You probably also saw me attaching these stickers on here, the L100 stickers. When I was uh, power washing it the other day, it just flew right off. I had to go find them in the yard. I noticed they were missing. Because of the nice weather, it's nice and warm, just stick right back on there. Okay, you know what? Now I'm going to start it up and uh, see if the PTO works. And also the brakes, you know the brakes that are on the pulleys? Well, they fell off when I was uh, trying to unseize the deck, you know? So it's got no brakes to hold the blades from moving when the engine's on, which is why you start the engine and the blades are kind of moving, you know, because nothing's stopping them from the momentum of the belt pulling on them. So uh, I'll have to take another look at this, but uh, does the tractor look pretty damn good or what? I think the tractor looks really good. So of course I forgot to turn on my mic and uh, right now I'm just voice overing it. I wanted to tell you that uh, that's the reason why the mower blades were moving 
while the engine was spinning no matter what. I stretched the cable a little bit and it's also missing the brake pads. But tires hold there from the ATF. So I think I figured it out. I just have to loosen the cable a little bit, you know, so it doesn't uh, pull the tension arm to engage the PTO. I'm gonna go for a ride. Just put some extra gas in there so I don't uh, get stuck somewhere. Let's go around the block. So it looks like I figured it out. I uh, loosened the uh, PTO cable a little bit. I'm gonna work on it a little bit more, but uh, in the meantime, I added some gas in there. Let's go for a ride. Steering's much better. It's looser now. I've been working it back and forth a little bit. Full throttle. As you can see, this thing was sold for $14.99. So I just spent an hour or so trying to figure out how to stop the pulleys from moving. I just couldn't do it. Reason why is because you know those little two brake things that once you disengage the PTO, the two brake things touch the two main pulleys, the brakes. Well, when I was taking it off, these two little brake pads just whoop, flew right off, you know, and they were so thin that, I mean, you couldn't, you can't glue them on because the force of the uh, momentum of the pulleys would just slap them right off, you know what I mean? They had to be drilled on, but there wasn't much left of the old brake pads, not to mention the fact that I couldn't find them anyway. <laughs> they just flew off somewhere. I don't know where they went. So I went to the backyard and uh, looked through my bag of parts and uh, I found like a, a Murray brake arm or a craftsman brake arm that had the brake on it and then I found a push mower one with a had a good brake had a lot of meat on it you know what I mean had a couple of bolts that went through it so I spent a lot of time drilling holes through the existing metal plate that stops the pulley from turning and that was the problem the blades just kept on moving when the engine was on because there was no brake holding it you know what I mean the belt would touch the crankshaft and it would pull it a little bit and with the momentum it'll just keep going spinning and spinning so you need brake pads to stop the pulleys from moving when you don't want them to you know and it had something to do with me stretching this cable too but uh i bent the arm that this cable goes onto so that it gives another half an inch or so towards that way so i got it all figured out now it took me a long time but and i sacrificed a couple of parts to get it going but got it going uh in addition you saw I cleaned the lights over here. Uh, I couldn't get the I couldn't get the um, overspray off because it was it's been on here forever, you know. And if I put some brake cleaner on there, it was almost kind of like warping the plastic or or something, you know, kind of wiping the the finish off of it, you know. So that didn't look good either. Uh, I still have to put some yellow tape on the on the yellow seat, you know, which is coming. But uh, 
We run around for a block ride on this thing, and this thing runs great, always starts up great. And you know what? I think it's going to mow really well, too, because it spins really well, and uh, it doesn't really vibrate, you know? So it's, it's good. So it looks like uh, my friendly competition with my friend John over at Turning Wrenches 85 in Madison, Tennessee. He's working on the same exact mower as me at the same time. Uh, I was watching your video yesterday, John. It looks like you got some issues with the governor because while you could get it started sometimes, you might have to adjust the valves. It looked like it was having a diff difficulty turning even with your two or three batteries that you were trying, you know? You might want to adjust the valves to see if it might be easier for you to um, crank it, you know? And in addition, when you do get it started, right, it seems like the RPMs are very slow. I think you have to mess with the throttle or the um, the tension, you know, not the tension, the, the governor. You might have to reset the governor to get the RPM back up. I'm sure you'll figure it out, but that's what it seems like to me. But uh, try the valves first. Uh, but anyway, I took some pictures. This thing's ready to go. Uh, probably gonna list it really high in the beginning, and I'm not in any hurry. Probably I'll list it for 750. I'll take as low as 550. You know, there's a lot of room there to negotiate, you know, but uh, I'm finally done with this thing. Thanks a lot for joining me on the six episode series on my uh, free John Deere L100. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.